everybody. Welcome fellow patriots. Welcome fellow deplorables, fellow rock dwellers, fellow clinger honors. I should say angry cling clinger honors. I think that's what they called us. Um, you know, all the uh, you bad people out there. Uh, it's amazing to me the things that are, in fact, we'll talk about this in just a moment, but the uh, names that we get called simply because we're conservative. But to mm -hmm. you, welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos. We are glad you're here. Uh, I'm George Landreth, and she is my good friend, Melissa Isaac. We are your co-host today. We're going to be with you throughout the show. I do want to... Uh, just give you a quick shout out. We've got uh, you know listeners on the radio stations in Jacksonville and Tampa, the villages in Florida, Las Vegas, Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, uh, if I recall correctly, Spring, uh, Colorado Springs, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C., uh, we're all over the place. And then, of course, we're also on the AUN TV network. And of course, if you're not there, never fear because... We have Al Gore's amazing internet. We truly are everywhere. It's great to be here. And and, and Melissa, you know, I, I, we started off with this whole idea of, you know, the rock dwellers, etc. cetera. Um, and that is, I thought it was interesting, longtime broadcaster, uh, Keith Olbermann. I can remember him in the 80s being a broadcaster. He said that Trump supporters need to be prosecuted. This is a quote, must be prosecuted and convicted and removed from our society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very old school Nazi-ish, isn't it? Well, yeah. very Nazi-ish, period. Yeah, yeah, very much so. There's nothing new under the sun, is there? Yeah, I mean, I can honestly say I have never said that my political opponents, simply because they're my political opponents, need to be removed from society, locked up, arrested, or otherwise in any way harmed. My goal is to simply beat them in a debate. Exactly, and that's um, the whole point of our American system, right, is that there's adversaries and there's freedom of speech. But no, I don't think until recently, I've never seen parties cross the line the way they have and wish death upon the other party. It's, right. it's insane. Yeah, yeah. You've got Jane Fonda saying that uh, the president getting COVID was a godsend. It's like, okay, that's wow. Um, and then on top of that, what I think is very odd and I find very troubling is uh, people, they always like to blame Trump for this. I'm like, oh, so Trump's responsible for people shouting they want to lock him and his supporters up. Um, but this is what I think is interesting. I remember very well when Barack Obama was president. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, if you ever saw him angry or peak in his voice, like you could tell he was a little ticked off, it wasn't about Benghazi. It wasn't about terrorists. It was mm -hmm. not about America's enemies. It was always about Americans who he considered to be political adversaries, generally Republicans, conservatives. Yep. They were the ones he would call an enemy. They were the ones that you could tell he had that look in his eye and that kind of tone to his voice where he was ticked off. And uh, I think people have taken note. I mean, I have to be honest. Um, this is a new world we live in. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. Trump, when he was inaugurated, some 50 members of Congress refused to go to the inauguration. To my knowledge, that's the first time that's happened. Um, and then within an hour of him being inaugurated, the Washington Post ran with an article talking about commencing an impeachment hearing against yep. him. He hasn't even done anything yet. He just took hasn't the oath of office. Yeah. And um, I don't think taking the oath of office is an impeachable offense, but maybe I'm wrong. I, you know, That's not what I recall discussing <laughs> in law school. But, um, but anyhow... Um, and then, but, but we're to believe that he's the reason there's all this discord in the country. Now, I, I understand he's not always the most unifying in his language, but I don't think he's the one that started the division, to be perfectly blunt with you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we well, are... The intolerance, yeah. the intolerance definitely started, I think, during the Obama administration, like you said. Um, if there was any sort of, a, a, you know, disdain by President Obama, it was against the political opposition within America, yeah. with, you know, from the conservatives. Right. But, and, you it know, wasn't, that, and it wasn't just disdain, by the way. He used okay. the power of government yeah. to target his enemies, his sure adversaries. Um, my organization, Frontiers of Freedom, was one of the organizations he targeted. And, uh, well, I know the Foundation for Moral Law, uh, Roy Moore's organization. I mean, the IRS stayed on top of them with various audits or whatnot. So, yeah, yeah I'm well aware of a lot of conservative organizations. They stayed under fire, definitely. Yeah. And, um, you know, he did things that Richard Nixon didn't even fantasize about doing. 
Mm-hmm. And now we know, we didn't know this at the time. I mean, I knew in 2016 that Barack Obama had done lots of these things, but we didn't yet know that he had been involved in a spying using the FBI and the national security apparatus to A, spy on a political adversary, and then to plant phony evidence yeah. before federal judges that they knew at the time was false evidence, that they knew had been manufactured yeah. and that was false and unreliable. And uh, so I, when people tell me that Donald Trump's the reason we're a divided country, I kind of look at them and think to myself, you are in a serious state of denial. You know, and it's just, it's, it's bizarre, I, I think. And, uh, and Keith Olbermann is another example of this. You know, does Sean Hannity, for example, mm-hmm. does he f- say that we need to lock up all the Democrats and throw them in jail? They should be prosecuted simply because they are the opposition? Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard Rick Schrader say that? Have you ever said nope. that? No. Nope. And I've never said that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, have. it's bizarre. So, you know, if there's any talk about locking up the political opposition, it's from, I think, frustrated conservatives who know that there are, there's proof, there's evidence of corruption, there's evidence of collusion. And we've been told, just wait, be patient, indictments are coming, and nothing seems to happen. So while the left is over here saying, we don't trust police officers, we don't trust law enforcement, you look at the conservatives, is there a reason for us to trust that, that the FBI is doing their job? No, I don't think that there is. Yeah, I mean, I think if you've been paying attention, you might assume the FBI will not do its job. In fact, it will essentially violate the law and trample on your rights. And that's sad because it used to be very well respected. It used to be universally respected and no longer is. And I would argue that's because of their behavior. Trust is earned. I don't owe anyone trust. You know, trust is something you earn by being honorable, by following the rules, by being trustworthy. And I'm sorry, the FBI has not been trustworthy. They they got off track under the leadership of Jim Comey. Well, and, and, and at the very least, maybe earlier, but we know it was at least then. That's part of the problem too, George. Is you know we have activist judges, we have judges who knowingly prosecute with false information or accept false information, um, whether they're you know the, let's say some some maybe Democrat or Obama appointees. But what's the solution? We have legislators who are not doing their job, judicial overreach. We have the executive branch where there's corruption and collusion. Where, what's the solution? And I think that's the frustration. And I, I've asked some, some you know, politicians from state reps, what's the solution? They say, well, we have to education. Education? Educating the public to do what? To accept it? Because really, well, what do we do? What do we do at this point? We know the FBI is not doing their job. What's the solution? We know the federal judges aren't doing their job. What's the solution? What do we do? No, you make a good point. I've uh, I've argued that um, Congress should impeach the most egregious uh, federal judges, the ones that are the most outlandish in their uh, legislating from the bench. And just and I'm not saying throw them in jail. I'm just saying they violate their oath of office, so they shouldn't be a judge anymore. They didn't. Exactly. They remove them. You know, mm-hmm. and remove them from office, and they can go into private practice. They can do whatever they want. I'm, so I'm not. I'm not saying lock them up. I'm just saying if you can't follow the law, if you can't do what you sp- took an oath to do, then go do something else. But this is that's not right. what you're going to do. And um, that's, that's one thing. But, but it seems like Congress does not have the stomach for it. You know, or the Senate doesn't. And I think they need to. I think that if they did that for a couple years in a row, just said, you know, every year we're going to round up a list of the five most egregious judges and yes. we're going to send them you know into early retirement mm-hmm. the met the word would get out and i think you'd yeah. fi- see judges realize and then people say oh well, that would endanger judicial independence i'm like what does judicial independence mean does it mean independent of the constitution and the rule of law exactly or does it exactly. mean independent of like popular political opinions and i don't want the republicans to just go after judges with the, with whom they have disagreements. I'm talking about judges that are egregiously legislating from the bench. Well, you know, I heard that Trump was forming some sort of a judicial oversight committee. I think Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch, he is going to be on that committee, actually, where they're going to oversee and make recommendations to federal judges to be removed for behavior such as that. So when I heard that, oh my gosh, it was like light bulbs went off everywhere because finally, there's finally some, you know, some sort of accountability because right. you and I both know. I think, you know, it's it's really the job of the court of appeals. It seems to do whatever they can do to try to affirm the opinions of the lower court. Right. People think, oh well, I'm going to go to the court of appeals and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to show them where this judge messed up. Well, we both know judges have nearly unfettered discretion in some types yeah. of cases where the the frustration is. I even wonder, like, did 
do, do, do the judges even read my appeal? Do they even read it because it's so yeah. obvious? So I think it's great to have some sort of a, a committee yeah. like that that will point out these judges and say, look, you're gone. Exactly. And I think we all understand the value of having a judge be life appointed upon good behavior because you don't want to, for example, if I were being tried for something, I wouldn't want to be before a judge. And let's assume I'm not popular. Like, let's assume because I'm a conservative, people don't like me. And let's assume it's, you know, Keith Oberman's view is pretty predominant. He wants mm -hmm. to round everybody up. I'd kind of like to make sure that judge isn't up for re-election that year because I'd like to make sure he's not looking at me as his meal ticket to this re-election. You know, mm -hmm. at, at the same time, I don't want judges who have unfettered discretion to do whatever they want. And they don't have exactly. to follow the Constitution. They don't have to follow the law. They just get to be like their kings. And, and what they say is, you know, handed down from God because of the divine right of kings or something crazy like that. So we have to have a happy medium. And our founders always envisioned that judges would be accountable to the Constitution. They'd be accountable to the law. And to yeah. me, that's a very, very important. Uh, and but yet, we're not there. And thankfully, of course, President Trump's been appointing the sorts of judges who will do that. In fact, this mm -hmm. week we've had a hearing on that. But our, our time is up for this segment, so I better uh, tell our listeners how they can get rebroadcasts and so forth, and let them know, remind them who we are. We're the Conservative Commandos. I am George Landreth, and she is Melissa Isaac. You can tell the difference because I'm the uh, I'm the tired, haggard, old-looking guy, and <laughs> she's the younger, more articulate, attractive woman. So it shouldn't be hard to tell. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired and haggard too. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe it's been a long day for you, but I'm always like that. But at any rate, um, we are up against the break. I just want to remind you: we're coming down the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, the AUN TV Network, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet. Talk Stream Live, iHeartRadio, AM FM 24-7, you name it. Even our own website, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. Melissa and I will be right back. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America, and get this. 
Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show. Uh, we actually call it the Conservative Commandos radio show. For those on television, you probably scratch your head and go, what? It's because we start out that way. We start off on the Conservative Commandos radio network broadcast all across this great nation. And then we were able to add the show on the AUN TV network. And so now we're a television show too, but it's in our DNA. So that's where we are. I'm George Landreth. She is Melissa Isaac. We're your co-host today. We're glad to be with you. I do want to remind you, if you want to rebroadcast of any portion of today's show or any previous shows, go to our website, ccrshow.com. Now, Melissa, before the break, we were kind of talking about the rule of law and the idea of accountability and the idea that... Uh, you know, judges should be held accountable to follow the law. And I, I think it'd be interesting to just talk to you about, you know, you're a practicing attorney, you, you live in that environment daily. Um, I think the press has gotten to a point where it's no longer accountable. And uh, I don't know if you have thoughts on that, but I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts about that. I don't think that anyone, any entity needs to be unaccountable to the law, not accountable. Um, you know, and judges, they have lifetime tenures, of course, but they still need accountability, if anything, to the people, to the Constitution. But you look at the media and fake news. I mean, that is such a, a, a term. Everybody uses the word fake news. Everybody, parties throw it back and forth against each other's media. But if they, there was a case back in the 60s, New York Times v. Sullivan, and that case basically says that if you are going to sue the media or a journalist, you have to prove what's called actual malice, which, by the way, is nearly impossible because you have to prove that they didn't actually believe what they printed. Well, so that's nearly impossible, right? And actually, recently, Clarence Thomas, in an opinion, it was actually, he, he wrote, um, look, we, we need to overturn New York Times v. Sullivan because if the Constitution doesn't place that burden upon a plaintiff, right, somebody bring a public figure suing a newspaper, then why did the, ju the judiciary do that? It, it's a, right. it's, it's called legislating from the bench, and that's something judges are not supposed to do. Who makes laws, right? The legislature, they make laws, not judges. Judges interpret the law, they in, in, in hand down sentences, they enforce the law, okay? They don't enforce it, that's the executive branch, but you, you get my drift. Yeah. You file a claim, you prove your case, judge rules. So, th the thing is, as you look back in the 60s, when this case was decided, there was no internet, there were no bloggers, there were no people walking around with Facebook Live. You know, anybody, well, what does it take now to be considered media? What does it take? A cell phone, right? That's right. it. And access to the internet. Well, things have changed so much since the 60s. Back in the 60s, right, people, I think the media really did report the news. Here's the news. Well, now we don't see news anymore. Now we see opinion pieces couched as media, as journalism. I don't know about you, George, but an opinion piece to me is not a piece of journalism. It's usually a piece of trash. But nonetheless, they have now this constitutional protection that was bestowed upon them, not by the legislature, but by the judiciary. So To lie about so people. Because I mean, we're not talking about whether or not their opinions are okay. I mean, you know, if they right. want to say they think tax cuts are great or tax cuts are horrible or tax increases are great, fine, that's your opinion, whatever what you want. There's no liability there. But if I get on there and say, you know, oh, Melissa's a horrible human being. She commits crimes every week. I, I have it on good authority. She robs banks in her spare time. You know, that's, that's called slander. It is. And that's not actually free speech. The founders did not believe it was important. They protected speech for a very specific reason. They wanted a robust debate about ideas. When you read the Federalist Papers, you understand they wanted a robust debate about the Constitution and whether or not it was a good idea. You read Thomas Paine's Common Sense and you, get, you realize, yeah, these were people who cared about ideas. And, they, and it, what's interesting is in a world in which there wasn't universal education, the average American was actually reading and aware of things like the Federalist Papers. Today, you've got to take a college course on it or go to law school to read about it. Back then, you could be a farmer in the backwoods of you know, rural Virginia out in the Blue Ridge Mountains somewhere and get news on a weekly basis. But guess what? You read the Federalist Papers and That's you right. understood them and debated them with your friends. And um, they understood that. All of a sudden now free press is, oh, no, it's not about ideas. It's just I get to call you names. I get to accuse you of crimes. That's not debate. That's not, that doesn't improve the discourse. And so 
this isn't about throwing journalists in jail or newspapers in jail. It's about if you're going to slander someone and damage their reputation simply because you don't like them and you want to do it, you have to pay some damages. You have to pay for the privilege of that as opposed to, you know, and I, and that doesn't harm the First Amendment at all. No, the First Amendment protects truthful speech, right? Right. True statements, not not false and defamatory yeah. statements. Exactly. You know, but or at least opinion statements. You know, the color blue is the prettiest color. The color, you know, whatever. Those are opinion statements. No one's harmed if I'm wrong. But when right. I start saying things like, oh, Melissa's actually a bank robber. That, you know, I mean, I make this very clear. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, sure. I mean, this is an example, but my point yeah. is, if I were to try to defame you, and if I try to make a credible case, that would harm your standing with your friends, in your community, in your law practice. All of a sudden, people are going, oh, wait a minute, I don't think I want to use her because she's a person of low moral character. She's out sure. robbing bank. That's not right. Sure. Your reputation is probably the most valuable thing you have. It's not even your house or your business. It's your reputation. Yeah, and, right. that, and, and maligning so, people is an attempt to steal that from you. It's, it's, I, I would say it's worse. If I broke into your home and stole your big screen TV, you could replace it like that. It wouldn't, I mean, I, I'm not saying, I'm not endorsing doing that. I'm just saying it right. would not radically change your life. It wouldn't destroy anything. Mm -hmm. It would just be kind of like an annoyance. If I stole from you your reputation, mm -hmm. your life's work, that's mm -hmm. a huge blow. That's, that's worse than burning your house to the ground. Well, that's what happened with Roy Moore in the 2017 special election. I, you know, I'm, I'm representing him in his, his claim, and, and that's what happened. In fact, there's a federal lawsuit right now, and it's very difficult for a public figure to sue for defamation, and our case is going forward in federal court you know, as we speak. And I'm very optimistic that with Clarence Thomas' recent um, opinion that he wrote, because we can now challenge the constitutionality of this actual malice standard, of how difficult it is for public figures to sue for defamation. Yeah. Because you're right, in today's day and age, you put some information out there and it goes viral and there's nothing you can do. There's right. nothing you can do. And then you have no legal recourse. And then a lot of people say, well, gosh, you know, if it, if it, if it wasn't true, the court would let a case go through because there's, you know, ignorance of the, of the law. Right. They think the court's um, actually going to no, look I'm at this. Not, no, you're right. The court, yeah. I mean, they could accuse you of the most outrageous things on the planet. If someone were to accuse me of just the most heinous crimes possible, that I was, you know, good friends with Osama bin Laden, I helped plan 9 11, you know, all this stuff. Um, I could, there, all I could do is complain and say that's not fair. And the, and, the, and the most courts look at me, ah, you're a public figure, tough luck. They get to lie about you if they yep. want to. It's free press. Yep. It's like, uh, no, that's not actually free press. The, the whole point of the free press was, that, again, to promote a robust, valuable debate in a free society. And right. uh, so that's, uh, yeah, I think you make some very good points. And this is part of the problem right now is that um, the other side doesn't have any actual moral values. The others, the, the left, the far left is our moral relativists. So if it, the ends justify the means. So that's where they can get off claiming that people like Brett Kavanaugh are serial rapists. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter that it wasn't true. It matters that yep. it's worth saying, it's okay to say it because we think our political objectives are so important, it's not a big deal. And on our side, we don't feel that way. You know, I mean, we, I actually, if someone came to me and said, you know, hey, listen, uh, you know, Barack Obama has this liberal, uh, is Larry, Merrick Garland, and, and I've got this great lie we can tell about him. I'd look at him and say, yeah, go away. That's stupid. I'm not going to lie about Merrick Garland. Um, yep. I'll defeat him on his record. I'll defeat him because he doesn't have the support he needs in the Senate. I am not going to sign up to malign someone and tell lies simply because, and then pat myself on the back and say, well, America's a better place because even though I lied, I saved them from Merrick Garland. That's what the left does every day. That's their calculus every day, and it's, it's why their party is so corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, look, I, I, you know, can't dispute that. You know, there there was a case here in Alabama. This is way back in. It's actually one of our. I used to be a Democratic governor. The first time I heard of this, believe it or not, and I'm, and I'm a conservative. I'm a proud conservative. But listen, if you truly care about the, the state of our country, if you truly care about what's right, we have to observe corruption on either side. Right. And back in it was the early 2000s when Governor Don Siegelman was governor of Alabama. There was a federal judge, Mark Fuller. 
He's been since removed from the bench. Um, he, he left the bench and got caught beating his wife, actually, I think on, on, on an audio recording. But it was a political prosecution, and there's a documentary about it, actually. So this is the thing is we as Americans, collectively, as conservatives, even as liberals, there's a lot of Democrats out there that really do want, that, that they're voting for Trump, by the way. A lot of Democrats are crossing over because they see big picture, and they see what's going on, and they're stepping back, and they're saying, look, something's got to give. So right. I give credit to those out there who... You don't, you don't stick with party lines necessarily. You do what's right, and that's the meaning of true integrity. And if we want to bring right. integrity back to our country, we have to do it on both sides. We have to hold everyone accountable. Absolutely. So, but, and um, that's why I don't but, say just yeah. Democrats. When I talk about the far left, I'm talking about the, the people, that you know, the, the extremists. Because you're right. There are a lot of, I, I have a lot of good friends who are Democrats, and they're good people. They're honest. They're, they put their ha hand on their heart when they play the national anthem. They get a tear in their eye when they play the national anthem. They're watching the Olympics, and some the, the American flag goes up, and there's medalists, and they're playing the anthem. You know, they, you know, they react the way you'd expect an American to react. Um, and yep. you're right. A lot of those, but that's not who I'm talking about when I talk about the, you know, the key. Yeah. Olbermans. Keith Olbermann's not a Democrat. He's a leftist fascist. Mm -hmm. And, the, and yep. unfortunately, and, the left is overrun by that. Well, the, the, the left are the ones, the fascists, they're the ones running the media companies, and they're the mm -hmm. ones that are, you know, sitting in Congress, the AOCs. So, but yeah, and I think that those leftist fascists you're talking about, those are scaring the Democrats, and they're, they're scaring the votes over to Trump, which is wonderful, which is great. I think, I think yeah. Trump's going to take this. I agree but, with you. you know, we... If, if there's a de I would say this, even as conservatives, Republicans, when you have a conversation with a, a level-headed Democrat, you'll be surprised at how much on the same page you really are Agreed. when you take all Agreed. the political smoke away and you sit down. I might be pro-life, they're pro-choice, but we're both pro, we're, um, we're both anti-murder, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's different perspectives here, but really, we just want to have good lives. We want to have opportunities. We want to be able to spend time with our family. So I encourage you guys, if there's somebody on the other side of the political fence, have conversation with them. Sit down and have a civil conversation. Yeah. That's what we need. That's what's lacking. Yeah. You'll figure it out quickly who you can and can't have that conversation with. But most Americans are still reasonable people, I believe. I but, think so. Uh, but we are up against a break. So uh, just remind our viewers and our listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. She is Melissa Isaac. I am George Landreth, and we are your host today. We will be right back after these messages. I just want to remind you, our website, ccrshow.com. Extra information is there as our rebroadcast. All you can hope for, it's all there. Don't go away. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm oh, so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google. Google offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. 
the complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show. Thanks to AUN TV Network, the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, and of course, I always like to call it Al Gore's amazing internet. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. I hope you catch that. Don't think to yourself, wow, George is really dumb. He thinks Al Gore invented the internet. I don't think that. I promise you. Just making fun of Al Gore there because, uh, you know, he deserves it, quite frankly. Um, it was more than, uh, you know, what, 12, 13 years ago, like five times over now, where he's been predicting cataclysmic other problems on the earth too. So he, he's made a lifetime of being wrong. So, but anyhow, we truly are everywhere. The possible except in China, North, North Korea, and Iran. Because my understanding is the regimes there don't seem to like the conservative commandos or freedom. But everywhere else, we're there. I'm George Landreth. She's Melissa Isaac. We're your co-host today. I do want to remind you, you can check out our website for more information, rebroadcasts, ccrshow.com. Well, Melissa, I thought we might get into the, the uh, kind of the other big news this week that's broken, and that is it's looking more and more likely that uh, the Biden family, not just Hunter, because some people say, oh, why are you worried about Hunter? That's just the guy's son. It involves Joe Biden, because Joe Biden's told us he knew nothing about it, what his son was up to. His son did nothing wrong. Now there's emails out there that have been, come across that would suggest that Joe Biden did know he was acting on the behest of his son. He was he knew exactly what he was doing, and that was he was his son was trading on his name and his power, and asking for special favors for which he he would be paid handsomely, and uh, it may help explain why Joe Biden has twelve thousand dollars in real estate. Who knows? Uh, you know, I'd like to know how does a, a man who's never really worked outside of government. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. senators don't make enough money that after, you know, a long time in the even a long time in the Senate, they should own $12 million of real estate plus have other assets on top of that. So, um, any, you know, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I think it's an interesting conversation to look at because I find it hard to believe that the media would be so disinterested if we just changed the names. Let's assume this was, uh, well, Trump and Don Jr., would they would they be so disinterested, or well, it, it, or would they be drawing up know, impeachment papers right now? The crazy thing, George, is they made such a big deal over Trump's tax returns when he followed the tax laws. He followed the tax laws. Well, he only paid seven hundred fifty dollars in taxes, but he gave like what four hundred thousand to charity, something like that. Yeah. So, but the media he wants have to paid make a big more. Deal the law doesn't something. require it, but he should have just wrote them out a check for even more. Who does that? Right, right. I've never paid exactly. more taxes than the government requires me to. I don't pay a penny more. If I owe, you know, fourteen thousand three hundred and sixty-three cents, then they get the sixty-three cents and not a penny more. And, and why? Because I'm not stupid. Exactly. Oh, exactly. So Trump follows the law. He does nothing illegal, and the media paints him as a huge villain. Yet we have evidence of corruption. We've got questions that need to be answered. This is going to be the president, right? We need to know these things. That's what they're saying about Trump. And yet there are crickets. But understand what there's just a handful of people that own all of big media just a handful and to my knowledge they're all leftists so of course they're not going to go after their own they're not going to attack their own they're going to focus on the seven hundred fifty dollars that trump paid so i i'm fed up with the media and you know like you hear sometimes well if the media doesn't cover you your issues they're not they don't represent society you become the media and that's what conservative commandos does so you know yeah. thank goodness for the alternative media because really where would you ever find anything out you wouldn't yeah that's a good point because like right now twitter's banning this story um, mm -hmm. So is yep. uh, Facebook. Um, they're right. taking any post down that mentions it, that uh, references the article itself, and they're banning people for having done it. For example, the uh, I have a friend who was banned this morning. I also ha noticed that the uh, White House spokesperson, uh, Ms. McEnany, was she's her site, her you know Twitter account has been suspended, and her crime is to link to an article that looks pretty well sourced. 
And I find it very interesting mm-hmm. because I'm thinking back four years ago. We've spent now almost four straight years, the press on a daily basis was telling us that they had smoking guns, that Donald Trump was an operative for the Russians, that he had colluded with the Russians, that the Russians had colluded with him, and that uh, he didn't really win the election. It was all illegitimate. And now we know that every bit of that was a pernicious lie created by the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, and the FBI. And that they knew it was false. Every last one of them knew it was false and proceeded with it. And they went ahead and bankrupted people, uh, ruined their reputation, and prosecuted to this day people like General Flynn on a lie, on a complete lie. Something they knew was a lie, that they wrote in memos. We know this isn't true, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. And uh, it makes you wonder why they wrote that on paper. That's kind of amazing to me that they're that stupid. Because at least now they could, if they hadn't done that, we, you know, in their emails, that we could say they could say like the press always does. Oh, I thought it was true, but now we know they didn't think it was true. Mm-hmm. So um, it's just amazing to me because um, I but think. Where's the indictments, place. George? Yeah. Where's the indictments? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hoping they'll do something with that. I mean, I'm, 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 I don't know for sure. It, this could be a pretty tangled web and so there's the possibility that it's still being worked on you know and, and I'm willing to give them a little more time but I have to be honest I'm starting to wonder if this isn't the deep state hiding the malfeasance and the criminality of the deep state yep. um, it, and I will guarantee you this if this election comes and goes and then this issue is dropped then that's exactly what it was. Because there's criminality here. So people need to go to jail. We know for a fact that there were people who violated the oath of office. They violated the law. They lied under oath. Let me ask you a question. If you lie under oath to a judge repeatedly, what do you think would happen to you? Oh, I'd lose my license as an officer of the court. Yeah. I would lose my license. Yeah, absolutely you would lose your license. I think it might be worse than that. Because I've, oh, yeah. judge, I've seen judges, I've been in the courtroom where an attorney got in trouble for violating certain rules and the judge made him a guest at the courthouse jail. for mm-hmm. you know, 10 or 12 or 15 days. Mm-hmm. And he told him to call his wife or to call his uh, secretary, whoever it was on the outside, who could bring him you know, a clean change of clothes because he was not going to go home that day. He was mm-hmm. going to go directly downstairs into a holding cell. And... Um, you know, he could he could go ahead and try to appeal it, but that you know how that works. You don't appeal it right yeah. away. You know, yeah. you might appeal it later, so he, he won't be there the rest of his life. But mm-hmm. he's going to be there for a while. And yep. uh, but it's interesting, the head of the FBI, it's okay, he can lie exactly. under oath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just you can't. I can't. Right. And I, I think to myself, That's I don't American. have that much power. You know, when I was a young attorney, it's not like I had the whole apparatus of government at my fingertips. Mm-hmm. So my, if I were corrupt, I would do far less damage because I didn't have the power to do lots of damage. Right. This guy's got basically this huge bulldozer and he can destroy yeah. and, you know, things like crazy. And so that's why where, you know, that's what you know, the scriptures tell us where much is given, much is required. That's right. That's why. Mm-hmm. That's why. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and yet these, you know, if there's, a, you know, examples, if, there, if there's a corrupt uh, plumber somewhere, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get overbilled for your plumbing. Or maybe you'll get shoddy work on your plumbing and you'll have a drip at your sink. But society isn't destroyed by that. I'm not, a, I'm not approving of any corruption, but that's not the kind of corruption that will bring that society to its knees. The kind of corruption we've seen in government under the Obama administration is the kind of corruption that if left unchecked will destroy America. And it will no longer be a free, independent people who are self-governing. My fear is we're on the way to that being taken away anyway. Yeah. I mean, and, and thank goodness Trump was elected, and thank goodness we have somebody who loves the rule of law, the Constitution, and, and has a vision of what America needs to be, despite all the, despite all the resistance. But we are at such a point right now, so I think almost at a point of desperation, where we are just begging for accountability and rule of law. And this problem is so big, and I think we're dealing with decades worth of, there's no telling, decades worth of corruption that Trump is trying to undo in hopefully two terms. But George, I have to tell you, I'm not, I can't say I'm too optimistic, because yeah. we know we have all this inf- information, and nothing is changing. Right. And even on things like when the, when the president says that they're going to declassify certain documents, people yeah. in the people below you know that work for him, yeah. uh, like the head of the uh, you know national uh, what the who's the, what is it the uh, term of the it's she's the woman that's in charge of it's like the intelligence you know group, and she's basically 
It looks like she's trying to play out the clock. She's hoping that Trump loses and that by delaying, she can then get a new sheriff in town who will say it's okay to hide this data and that we don't have to release it to the public. And uh, that's crazy to me. I mean, I think um, the American public has a reason to need to know this. And I would argue if, if, I'm, if I'm President Trump, when uh, I'm reelected, that person gets the ax. They, oh, they, they, get, they get to retire early, go home, find something else to do for a living. And I'm going to put someone else in, maybe Rick Grinnell. I'd probably, I'd probably put Rick Grinnell in. I, I, you know, I didn't know much about Rick, Rick Grinnell four years ago. In fact, he was a stranger to me four years ago. But he's actually impressed me a lot. He's been willing to stand up and do the right thing and be transparent. And that's what we need. Transparency. It's a great disinfectant. Exactly what we need. Yep. Mm -hmm. Transparency and accountability. Yeah. Let's Government only works if it's accountable. That, that was the whole idea between checks and balances and periodic elections and all of this. And um, our founders wanted government to be accountable to the people. And now what we're finding is, is the government's not even accountable to the president sometimes. Mm -mm. You know, They're the most powerful man in the world. And it doesn't listen to him. It, tell, it basically flips in the bird and says, no, I don't have to listen now, to you. None of the branches are accountable. The judicial branch, they're, not, they're accountable to no one. All three branches, who are they accountable to? And what do you do? Yeah. I, I think, what do you do? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a dangerous sort of thing. I, I'm, it makes, makes me nervous because as somebody who I used to teach constitutional law, there's a genius to that doc. <clears throat> Our founders understood what it would take to preserve a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And they understood the dangers of it just being a pure democracy where basically it became a practice of three wolves outvoting the two sheep as to what's for dinner. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they didn't want uh, you know, a coalition of people to say, we'll get together and we'll make sure that you know, George and Melissa can't talk. We'll criminalize their speech. They, that's what you have the First Amendment. If properly understood, the First Amendment says mm -hmm. the majority does not get to vote on the appropriateness of your opinions and your speech. You get yeah. to decide what you, same thing about where you go to church, same thing about the people you hang out with or the people you, the causes you espouse. And, uh, and we're getting away from that now as we kind of you know, come full, full circle back to Keith Olbermann, you know? Lock them yeah. up is what he's saying. Round up the people who, who I disagree with, throw them in jail. Wow. Yep. He's a fascist. He is. So, well, we are up against the clock, and uh, so we've got to take a break. Sometimes I feel like the clock is a, not my friend, but it's just the rules. It's like gravity, right? You can't fight it. But uh, you're listening to Conservative Commandos. She is Melissa Isaac. I'm George Landreth, and we are your Conservative Commandos host today. We will be right back, but I do want to remind you, our website, ccrshow.com, is a treasure trove of, Trevor, treasure trove of information and rebroadcasts. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. 
Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. We are now, even though called the radio show, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, it's actually a television show as well on the AUN TV network, the American Uncensored News Network. And of course, we're carried on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network all, all over this great nation and on Al Gore's amazing internet. I'm George Landreth, and she is Melissa Isaac. We're your co-hosts. We're glad you stuck around. There's lots more to discuss. I do want to remind you, if you want to hear or view a rebroadcast of our show, you want more information? I know just the place for you. CCR Show. Dot com. And that does not stand for Credence Clearwater Revival Show. That stands for <laughs> Conservative Commandos Radio Show, ccrshow.com. But uh, anyhow, uh, Melissa, I was, I, I was seeing the news, something that I kind of thought was bizarre. There was a time in America where uh, if, even if you were a communist, you wouldn't admit to it in public because it meant you could never win an election. And yet, we now in the news, there's a story of a Portland mayoral candidate. So we're out here in the, you know, Portland, uh, 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 Oregon, where they've got all the you know, violence all summer long. Uh, she's running for the, and apparently she's leading the polls, and she has a skirt with the faces of communist leaders on it. And they're not just communist leaders, they're murderous communist leaders. People like Che Guevara, who would uh, rape and slaughter women and children. Uh, Joseph Stalin, who killed literally, you know, he actually killed a lot more people than Hitler did. Yep. And then, of course, the granddaddy of them all, Mao Zedong, uh, who killed probably a hundred or million or more in his uh, takeover of China. So in other words, what she has on her skirt is the faces of mass murderers. She could have just as easily put up, uh, included on that skirt, um, someone like Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Who incidentally, so probably the I'm only sure. person on her skirt who killed fewer people than Adolf Hitler was Che Guevara. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the rest actually put you know Adolf Hitler to shame. And yet... And she's running around wearing it. I'm sitting here looking at a picture of her with this skirt on, and I'm thinking to myself, this is incredible to me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible. I don't know what you think about that or what it, what it says, but I, I can't believe how we fall on. I don't understand the draw. I don't understand why people are drawn to, to oppression and to murder and intolerance. Everything that the left says that they're against They seem to rally around. And, you know, George, it really seems to me like maybe we've just been asleep over the last 20 years because all of a sudden we're just being infiltrated from the inside. 
And was that Ronald Reagan who said that we'll never be destroyed on the, from the outside, it'll be from the inside out? That's yeah. kind of what's happening right now. Because everything this, this candidate stands for is anti-American. Absolutely everything. Yeah. And if these, I don't understand, what do people think they're going to get? What do they think they're going to achieve by voting in people like this? Certainly not a better quality of life. Certainly not freedom. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, um, it's it's just a strange thing to me that um, that we live in a world where we could elect somebody who seems to be essentially paying homage to mass murdering thugs, people who use the power of government to slaughter millions of people, and uh, and yet that's now apparently okay. And this is a, and it starts to explain a lot because you know Portland has been plagued by. Uh, you know, over a hundred nights of consecutive protests and rioting. They weren't all peaceful, even though CNN might tell you they were. Um, and yet you kind of scratch your head and go, how is this possible? I mean, you know, these people are, I just, what's the draw? How do you vote for someone who says, you know, I approve of Mao Zedong? I'd be nervous <laughs> about voting for them, giving them power. Why would you give, like, you know, would anyone ever after they know, you know, Hitler arose to power without explaining to the public what he was going to do. The average German who voted for the Nazi party early in the process thought they were getting something different than they got. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once he got power, of course, elections didn't matter anymore. So there was a lot of people who got duped. But I bet you if you went back and went back in time and they knew who he was in advance, I don't think the average German was going to vote for somebody who's going to kill millions of people and plunge the, the nation in the war, war into world into World War II. I think, um, you know, I read a book by a German who was explaining, not, not excusing, but explaining what happened in Germany, that the, originally the Nazi party was arguing that it was going to restore decency and hard work and, you know, get the economy back on track, etc. after the, you know, debacle of World War I and then the Treaty of Versailles and the problems it solved. In other words, it was all a lie. It wasn't about that, and, and, but, that, but that's what they voted for. And they had, you know, Hitler Youth, he said, he said, as a kid, my parents enrolled me in it, and it was because they thought it was like the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And then later we realized it wasn't. And then it was too late. It was like, you know, you had to be quiet about your opposition or they'd kill you. And so, mm -hmm. and so my point is it wasn't a book to in any way defend it. It was trying to explain how an otherwise reasonable people could have gotten duped into this whole thing. So, but I'm asking myself now, how stupid you have to be when the person's got it on their skirt? Yep. Yep. Well, and I go back to what do they think that this person here is concerned about their education? I want to give you free college and I want to make sure that you have free medical and make sure your family is taken care of, yet their idols are into mass murders and genocide and everything opposite from what they think they represent. But some of these people, they, they don't, there's people who don't think the Holocaust ever happened. There's people who think that the Holocaust was something that was just concocted for social control or to poison people against socialism or, you know, some people, and I'll, so I've seen a, a couple interviews where some Holocaust survivors have come forward and they're warning Americans. They're warning, they're saying, listen, you have no idea what you're doing. You have no idea what is what you're letting happen to your country because they've seen the declination before. And everybody's just quiet. I think everybody's hoping, well, you know, well, I hope Trump gets elected, fingers crossed, and then life will kind of rock on for at least four more years. But listen, Americans, if you, if you love America and liberty and freedom, you've got to wake up and get involved. Because if Trump gets elected, God willing, that's four more years, but then what? No, you're then right. And yeah, four years is a blip in terms of history. I mean, don't get me wrong, four years in the life of a four-year-old is our lifetime. But I'm old enough to know that four years flies like crazy. It, you know, it'll yes. be over before you know it. And so we have to look to the long run. And while I believe that electing Donald Trump is critically important, mm -hmm. in four years we have to be prepared to defeat fascism again and communism again. And, uh, and we need to drive that ideology out of the country because there was a time when America, if you stood up and said, I'm the candidate who represents fascism and communism, you are the candidate who would get 0% of the vote. You know, and that's yeah. not where we are today, and that's unfortunate. Well, in, in other words, our parents, and I, you know, we're probably smarter than we were. Are well, as a in, nation. in four years, in four years, we're going to lose, you know, four years worth of older conservative voters, and in four years, our fourteen-year-olds who are going to school in these indoctrination centers will be eighteen and will be casting votes. Yeah. You guys, every every year that goes by, we've got younger voters who think that socialism is a good thing. Yeah, and they've, they've been taught Che Guevara is cool. Right. With a Che Guevara t-shirt. Right. You're right. We need to be very concerned. We need to be very concerned. Absolutely. I'm not a public school fan at yeah. all. 
because um, and you look at all these these teachers. You see YouTube videos where these teachers are. I saw one where she had a gun and she was fake, you know, like she was shooting Donald Trump in the head right in front of her. It was a middle school class. What is this? And then you have some teachers that are getting fired because they talk, they reference God or reference the Bible or yeah, wear a Trump how, T-shirt how, to school how, or whatever. There's complete tolerance. Yeah. No, it is interesting. I mean, I, I it's stunning to me. Um, and of course, anytime we say something like what you just said, they say, oh, well, you're against education. It's like, no, I'm for education. But I don't know why the government has to run the school. And they say, well, then how would poor people get educated? And the answer is school choice. The government can still pay for it, but why do they have to run the school? For example, exactly. if you're poor, um, we don't send you to a government-run grocery store. Right. So the government, you know, the method we use is if you're poor and disadvantaged and starving, we have a system where the government will help you get food, but you use the same places to get your food that you and I use. That's right. So why couldn't we do that with schools? How about hospitals? Do we have government hospitals for poor people? Or, nope. yeah, we, what Thank do we you. have? We have hospitals. Mm -hmm. And if you're poor, we have programs to help you pay for your medical care. And so That's my right. point is education is important. I. I want everyone to have a good education. Then why not have school choice and get government um, only worrying about how to pay for the education, not actually administering the curriculum and running the school? Because they don't do it well. No, they don't. I mean, let's be honest. Even if you don't have a problem with the indoctrination going on here, you can't possibly argue that government-run schools are succeeding real well. Look at how we score internationally on things like math and science. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not until mm -hmm. we get to college where we start to pick up the slack and make up the lost ground. And where do, what do we have there? School choice. Mm -hmm. You know, That's and right. so public schools there have to compete with private schools. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so as a result, both benefit. But, uh, but not at the K through 12 level. They have a monopoly. And so I think you're right to be concerned about what that means in the long run for our country. Because we basically have an indoctrination camp that we're forced to pay for. And for most Americans, it's not a serious option to send your kids to private school and pay the freight on taxes so that you can also fund the public school because you'll pay mm -hmm. both. Yep. That's why, it's why only the wealthy can afford private schools, generally speaking. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I completely agree with you. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Americans out there. There's some families that have second jobs just to pay for private school um, because they don't want to send their kids to a failing public school right. or a public school with little oversight within the classrooms. My, my sister actually just moved to Alabama from um, around the Seattle area. And my nephew, who's 17, tells me how he went to high school with the smell of marijuana with you know, kids who would blatantly disrespect the teachers, walk out of class at will, but they, there was no control. There was no ability to control the schools. And, and who, who learns in that environment? He's down here. Oh, and you know, in Alabama, the Alabama schools, a lot of them still paddle. Yes, a wooden paddle. So, but he said the kids down here are so well that they're, they're respectable. They respect their teachers. He's never once smelled marijuana in his high school. He's shocked at how how organized and how respectful and how how clean everything is. He's yeah. shocked. Yeah, sometimes uh, we we think that because something's old fashioned, it doesn't work. And I would argue old fashioned honesty, integrity, respect, those kinds of things. Yeah, they're old fashioned, but we could use a healthy dose of that old fashioned. <laughs> you darn right. Yeah. yeah, I would argue free speech is also old fashioned. You know, it's over two hundred years old in, in America. And guess mm -hmm. what? It's awesome. That's yeah, right. So, um, but anyhow, um, we are up against the clock, and we've got. Uh, uh, We've got two guests coming up, so we've got to take a break here, and we'll come back after the break with uh, our two guests. But I just do want to remind you, this is the Conservative Commandos. She's my good friend and your good friend, Melissa Isaac. I'm George Landreth. Hopefully I'm your good friend too, but I'll let you decide that. But at any rate, we are the Conservative Commandos. We are coming to you on the Conservative Commandos radio network, the AON TV network, which is the America Uncensored News Network. And of course, on Al Gore's Amazing Internet with iHeartRadio, TalkStream Live, um, uh, Net Talk America, AMF 24 7, you name it. And of course, the most important one, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. We will be right back. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. 
Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club. For around a dollar a day, if any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these dental visits vision coverage hearing coverage home delivery of drugs even gym memberships some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve call us right now the call is free the information is free and there's no obligation make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a medicare advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want call us right now Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and the television show. Just remind you, check out our website for rebroadcast. Uh, anything, information you want, it's all there, ccrshow.com. I'm pleased to introduce Tom Del Beccaro. He is one of the people that you really need to be listening to if you under, want to understand what's going on. He's a columnist at Fox News and Fox Business and the Epic Times. He is also the former chairman of the California Republican Party uh, and a former U.S. Senate candidate from California. He's also the author of a great book you really need to read. That's The Divided Era. It helps you understand what's going on in the world today. You may have noticed it's a little divided. But at any rate, uh, Tom is a friend of freedom, a friend of the Constitution, and a friend of liberty. And uh, I would uh, I feel lucky to call him a friend, and uh, and you should as well, because if those things matter to you, he's on your side. With that, Tom, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. It's always good to have you. Great to be on. Uh, another exciting week. It's less than a month to go now to the election, and uh, I suspect every single day something new will come out. Yeah, you're right. It's a, it's this is. Um, Definitely not, you know, 2020 has been a, a crazy year, and I think the election will uh, live up to the billing. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't expect it, uh, the Democrats to uh, go away if, if and when they lose. I don't expect them to go away mildly. Uh, this week, Nancy Pelosi with her 25th Amendment Commission, which I find, you know, I, I think will be a good segue into, the, into this. Why does she need a 25th Amendment Commission just days before... Uh, an election, does it, she must be thinking that Trump's going to win if this commission is necessary. Now, you make a good point because she's certainly not putting it in place to, to get rid of uh, Biden, I wouldn't think, right? I mean, that's who she wants, right? So, yeah, um, there's a lot of things about this that strike me as very odd, that, that they tell us that Trump's, you know, going to lose, the polls tell us he's going to lose, oh my gosh, you know, and that, but, but let me just ask you, when you turn on a football game and you've gotten, and maybe you got home late and the game's almost over, and so you flip it on, and they're not showing you the score yet. For some reason, that's not on the screen. But what you see is a team either dropping back uh, to throw long passes, or in, on the other hand, maybe you see the team taking a knee. What do you know about the score? <laughs> yeah, lopsided. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, you don't even have to see the score. You already know the, what's going on. I feel like I'm watching that game, but I'm being told 
that the score is different than that scenario would, would and I kind of scratch my head and go, I think they must be talking about a different game. They can't be right. Yeah, well, there are, this is active voter suppression on the left. I mean, these latest polls with Biden with a big lead continue to poll Republicans at 27% turnout rate. It's never been that way. It's always been 33 or above. So you can Even easily... Even in a bad year. Yes. So, you know, you can figure the math out right there. And they oversample Democrats. And that's how they get to these leads uh, because they're no longer journalists, they are campaign operatives. And so you have to look at other things. You have to look at the nonpartisan. There's a lots of tea leaves out there that indicate to me that this race is different. The most recent is Gallup with the highest ever rating at 56% that people are better off than they were four years ago. That's an amazing stat. Particularly and in so, 2020. Yeah. Because this right? has not really been a good year. I mean, you know, so so if people feel like they're better off, that but means they're Kamala saying... Kamala Harris told me that this was the worst ever by a performance by a uh, by an administration. Are you denying that, George? <laughs> I think so. so to get to 56%, despite our economic troubles, um, you know, that's a very interesting poll in my mind because that poll tells me it doesn't. It's not a poll that says who you're going to vote for, and people are afraid to say who they're going to vote for. But it's sort of the, the poll of, you know, who do you think is going to win? That's sort of your secret way of being able to say I'm a Trump supporter. Right. If despite mass unemployment re related to COVID, why are you willing to say this? And the, and I think the answer is that they've seen what's better, and it puts to the lie. You know, this the Democrats are out there telling Americans that like Kamala Harris, that all these deaths are on the president. But the vast majority of people in, the, in this country know that the president's not in charge of any shutdowns and hasn't been for months on end or how this is, is going on. Right. That happens in the blue states. They're in control of that. They sent the people to nursing homes, not the president. And so the, for the Democrats to say, oh, all of this has happened because of Trump, when, when they've been in charge of the states where it's happened, it... I, it People don't buy that. And so, uh, you know, the two biggest issues are COVID and, uh, and the economy. For Republicans, the issue in COVID is how to, to throw off the yoke of government. And for both sides on the economy, the issue is how to throw off the, go the yoke that is government. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's why you get polls like this. Yeah, it is kind of odd to me that um, these people are willing to exonerate Governor Cuomo, for example. Yeah. Who actually, like you said, literally sent people infected with COVID and returned yeah. them from hospitals where they could receive treatment and put them back in nursing homes with other seniors who were healthy at the moment, but probably had, you know, because of their age and, and situation, were very vulnerable. And then they had massive deaths in that age quantification. And you go, yeah, that's Donald Trump's fault. You yeah. got to be I some kind of special stupid or alternatively special dishonest to uh to make that argument and yet that's the argument that uh that uh, kamala makes and i and i would argue she she might be special stupid and special dishonest it's possible to be both maybe or is the wrong you know i don't know <laughs> and or and or right yeah yeah and if we if we look back at that debate uh i i knew of course i debated her um and i've been telling people fox otherwise you know she's an accuser she's not a she's not a policy solution person. And so she, right out of the gate, made accusations. And right out of the gate, I knew the depth of her, what her lies would be when in the very first question from the biased moderator, she says that Trump called COVID a hoax. So the, she was willing to outright lie no. all along. And her answer with Abe Lincoln was a complete lie too. Abe yeah, Lincoln didn't wait at all. The very first day the Senate was back in session, and before yeah. any new senators were seated or before any the president was inaugurated in an election year and the opening came only 27 days before, he nominated and got on the same day the confirmation of a new Supreme Court Supreme justice. Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually the chief justice. Yeah, and it, it is stunning that 
she would just make it up or that, or that she would rely on such stupid people to, to make that up. But, you know, she <laughs> Joe Biden was responsible for saving the auto industry. Joe Biden was responsible for saving the economy. I mean, I, can someone <laughs> fact check that, please? Because I mean, what the 300,000 manufacturing yeah. jobs have been lost. There was just no end to this. Right. Uh, ABC fact checked the debate, but they only did it for on the Pence side. They right. didn't want they didn't want to go out and do the uh, Kamala Harris side. Yeah. So, I, you know, at the end of that debate, there were, I knew that uh, Pence had a comfortable victory because MSNBC said it was tied. <laughs> that must mean he was up by two touchdowns at yeah. least. And you, you saw Frank Luntz did his focus group of independents who were pretty decisive in the, in the notion that they didn't like her. And she does have a likability problem. She's not Amy Klobuchar. She's not Elizabeth Warren. These are people that, that the Democrats really liked. Uh, Kamala Harris was so unliked in her own state, she was fifth in the polls. If you remember, I was the first in the country on Fox to say she wasn't going to make it to Iowa. And the reason for that is because she was languishing in California. And the reason why she's languishing is because she's arrogant. She doesn't work hard. She's not there for somebody else. And as a result, she didn't have a deep following in this state. And so by the time the uh, it came around to start voting for president, she's fourth or fifth in her own state in polling. And, and I, I knew there was no way she could she could sustain herself. So now she's the VP pick and, you know, her awkward facial thing, uh, you know, mannerisms throughout the debate and, you know, uh, I'm speaking now or it, it's the way she says I'm speaking now. It's, you know, and the smirks that she makes. So and, and of course, the other reason why I know they won is because this very biased commission on presidential debates, all it, which is stacked, replete with anti-Trumpers. Yeah. The, bipartisan the next morning, changed the rules without even talking to the president, right. team, uh, because they wanted to crush the story of Kamala Harris's getting be soundly beaten in a debate. Right. Well, the other thing that I find, and and we've got to go to break in just a second, but I I just it drives me nuts is the bipartisan commission, the unbiased bipartisan commission. Then why is it that every single moderator is from the left, and they're nonpartisan? They're unbiased. <laughs> I appreciate you pointing out that because I, I see it expressed as if it's like the gospel, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so let it be written, so let it be done kind of thing. But we are up against the break. Do want to remind our viewers and our listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth, and he is Tom Del Beccaro. And Tom and I will be right back after these messages. I do want to remind you, you can check out our website if you need more information or rebroadcast ccrshow.com. Do not go away. We'll be right back. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. 
Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and the television show. Thanks to the Conservative Commandos radio network, the AUN TV network, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet, talk stream live, iHeartRadio, you name it, we're all there. And of course, we have our own website where you can get rebroadcast and lots of information. And that is ccrshow.com. We've been talking with Tom Del Beccaro, who, um, He's the author of The Divided Era. He's uh, a person who thinks deeply about what's happening and puts it in historical context. And we've had a great first half, as it were. We're coming back after the halftime break. And uh, I, my, I'll, I'll kick off to Tom, and I'm sure he'll return it for a touchdown. But uh, I thought I'd pick up on something, Tom, that you had talked about, um, and that is that question about, are you better off? And that becomes a surrogate. And maybe I can set it up this way. Um, the left has done a pretty good job of arguing that the only plausible reason you could support Donald Trump is because you're a bad person. And, and of course, the, in, in Great Britain, they did that with Brexit, you know, and so as a result, their polls were off. They told Brits that the only reason you could support Brexit was because you're evil. And, you know, a lot of Brits said, no, I actually support Brexit because we have uh, several hundred years of of tradition with a parliament and we led the world in, you know, in all this uh, sort of you know, Western thought, you know, and so forth. And uh, I kind of don't want to turn that all over to Brussels, uh, you know. And so guess what? Brexit passes, even though it's supposed to fail easily. I would argue this is a similar situation. And I'll just throw this into kind of the mix, too. There's also a certain threat out there. I know a lot of Republicans, and I have yet to have a single Democrat ever tell me this, and I've talked with many of them, and I've even asked about it. Dem Republicans who will not put a bumper sticker on their car because they don't want it vandalized. They will not put a sign in their yard, not because they're worried the sign will be stolen, but because they don't want their house to be vandalized. And, um, and yet Democrats don't have that same fear. So in this divided era, it's not that both sides are doing it. One side is, and I'll just throw this in. My mother, who is in her 70s, was at a essentially a sine wave for Donald Trump, a spontaneous little sine wave in her local community. A man came uh, up and started grabbing their signs and stomping on them and shouting F Trump and was very kind of threatening. My mother has a lot of courage. So she walks up to him and you know, grabs his uh, sleeve on his shirt and says, excuse me, sir, those are my signs. What are you doing? He turns around and backhands her with his arm, knocks her to the ground, knocks her hat off, and she, of course, hits her head on the, the uh, curb. Fortunately, police were actually only a few, uh, you know, yards away because before my mother could even get up they already had him uh you know, they'd already grabbed him and had him in custody um but my point is this happens on their side we're not doing that and someone might say oh that thing last week with the um you know with the, the mayor of michigan is your side it's like no it's not these are guys that hate the police these are antifa people you know one of them was apparently had like some sort of satan thing in the background on one of his you know pictures and stuff it's like these are not people on the right. So my bottom line is they've created an environment which people will not tell the truth. And so we have these surrogates for, for, for trying to get the truth out of people. Yeah, I, no, I agree with you. That's why the, the polling related to who do you think is going to win has consistently said Donald Trump. Yeah. And that's sort of the secret way of saying yeah. that I'm supporting Donald Trump. But this not telling you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a similar question to that is the one where people say, who are most of your friends voting for? Yeah, 
Absolutely. And the Gallup poll that's that's out this week with 56% think they're better off. That doesn't mean they're voting for them, but we're better off. It's it's this secret way of saying this. I will note um, that there are states, however, like Pennsylvania, where you repeatedly get these reports where there's Trump signs everywhere, but no Biden signs. Yeah. And I, and it's, it's a few months ago, I was driving through Michigan and I saw the exact same thing. I was I was there just kind of doing a Great Lakes trip, so to speak. And uh, I was really surprised at the vast disparity. Yeah. And so that's sort of interesting to me. Is that a reflection that the Biden camp isn't using any signs whatsoever? I mean, there are candidates and, and consultants who don't, you know, you don't make money off signs, so you don't buy signs. But why is this dynamic with regard to the signs? And but, but at, at a deeper level throughout this campaign, the Democrats have a skewed normal campaign strategy. They are not going door to door like Republicans have been doing in battleground states. Pennsylvania, the, the reason why the Democrats dropped in voter registration 90,000 and Republicans picked up 70,000. Yes, it's sentiment, and I think that's a more important poll, by the way, than anything done by a pollster, but it's because Republicans seized that opportunity. They were there to register people. People will change voter registration if it's easy enough for them to do that. And in this instance, the Republicans have done that, and the Democrats have not been doing that throughout the country. They haven't been knocking on doors. They think they can win this digitally. And I've never believed that. Interesting enough, we knew Kamala Harris lied about Lincoln. It was Lincoln who crystallized the manner in which we do things or have ever since when in 1856, they assigned, he would, he would assign 10 Whig voters to one volunteer. And it was their job throughout the cycle to talk to that person throughout the year and then get them to the polls. Now, of course, back then, getting them to the polls was a real thing. You, you know, they lived in woods. They didn't have transportation, horses, whatever. We, we do the same thing. We have the same model. We use technology that they didn't have. But the Republicans have been doing that, and the Democrats have not. And I, you know, they claim it was because it was dangerous because it was COVID. I, I, I maybe, but we've never had a campaign where... It is so decidedly like that, unless, of course, you want to consider the fact that Hillary didn't go to certain states and that same sort of analogy. So I'm not certain where this race is from that perspective, but I would much rather be the Republicans who did it than the Democrats who did not. That's a fair point. Uh, it's, it is interesting um, the, when you kind of look at when you just look at the news coverage and the idea is that every problem that America currently has is all Donald Trump's doing. And it's just, it, there's a certain kind of lack of realism about it because Donald Trump did not bring this virus here. And then they act like, well, he's handled it so horrifically. And, it's, and then they, and then they come up with all the things they would do. And that's all the things he's already done. And yeah, they rewrite history and pretend that they didn't criticize him and say he was a xenophobe for cutting off travel. Uh, you know, it's just yeah, like you scratch I, your head and go, why doesn't the press make these people tell the truth? They used to, even when they were biased, they used to be biased, which was more subtle. But they still kind of held both feet to the fire on both sides to be, at least be reasonably honest. Now that's all off. One side gets to lie through their silly teeth like crazy, and it's not a problem. Well, I, I think it, it, it's gone so far in this particular instance, and, and their refusal to answer the Supreme Court question is just – its unsellable. You cannot go on national TV and say, no, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Clearly, they are going to do it. It's part of their radicalism. They're, they just don't want to tape. They want tape of them saying it is all they're yeah. trying to avoid. And they're lying about fracking. And, you know, even AOC tweeted immediately afterwards when she said that and got a half million overnight likes for their tweet. You know, they, uh, they, I can't believe that voters will go, oh, that's okay, you don't have to tell us. In fact, I don't think it's working for them. Nobody wants to upset a 150-year-old rule or, or make, make light of or silly a, a, an institution which everybody has such high respect for. And so if they think they can get away with that, I don't think they can. I mean, I've been saying on air, and I'll say it here, you know, you have to vote for Biden in order to find out what he's going to do, yeah. much like you have to vote for Obamacare. Right. In order to, to yeah, and and people aren't are buying that. They see that for what it is, either gutlessness or, well, it is gutlessness. 
they're not willing to take that stand. And their flip-flop on fracking is the same thing, you know, because there is endless video of them saying that. And now they're trying to backtrack it. And, you know, this isn't the old days. If you did this in 1960, you could say something in Texas and something different in Pennsylvania and get away with it. You cannot get away with it to those degrees. And we're not just talking on the edges here. You know, <laughs> the Green New Deal, they lie about that when it's on their website uh, and, and, and saying it's crucial framework. You, you know, so people see this. In 28 days, it's just going to come down with, do you trust the left? It, uh, despite all the radical things they want to do. Yeah. Uh, and the, then the, first the city blocks they've burned, the businesses yeah. they've destroyed. You know, you, th there's a lot of reasons not to trust these guys. Yeah, and, and so are they going to go with their distaste for, will enough people go for the distaste of Trump's personality to force them into socialism? And I think at the end of the day, they, they won't. Having said that, I think the president's campaign needs to get back on a positive note and say, and barnstorm these last four weeks saying, here's our health care plan, here's our tax plan, here's where we're going. They have to, elections are, are about the future always, right. always. And so they need to really start hammering home, here's where we're going, and rise above the negative campaign. You make a very good point there. Um, I think that is critical. You know, people are going to support. Uh, the past is only important to the extent it helps you have a vision of what's going to happen in the future. So the fact that Trump was good at building the economy in the first term is only relevant to the extent, extent you believe that's what he's going to try to do the second term. So he ought to talk about it. You're exactly right. That's a um, very, very good point. Thanks so much. We are up against the break, and I know you've got lots of things you've got to do as well. So with that, I just want to tell our listeners and our viewers, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth, and we will be back. But thank you, Tom, for joining us. And if somebody tuned in late and missed part of it, go to our website. You can get a rebroadcast, ccrshow.com. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. Oh, I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. Friend. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. 
And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show, thanks to AON TV Network, the American Uncensored News Network, and of course, the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, broadcast all across this great nation. And if you're not near a broadcast tower, never fear, because Al Gore's amazing internet comes to the rescue. We truly are everywhere. Uh, maybe not in China or North Korea, maybe not in Iran, but everywhere else, we're there. I'm George Landreth. I'm, I'm one of your co-hosts today. I'm glad you stuck around. If you've missed any portion of our show or want to catch a previous show, uh, you can get rebroadcasts for viewing or listening at ccrshow.com. I'm pleased to introduce our guest, Angela Box. She's a friend of the show. You've seen her before. She's a former actress. She's an uh, elementary school teacher. In fact, that's where she came to kind of, you know, not, quite frankly, national prominence because she had the audacity to say some politically incorrect things about radical Islam, about President Obama, and um, people went crazy. And so she was uh, targeted for canceling even before canceling was cool, <laughs> you know. But uh, bottom line is she has become a prominent pundit because she stood up for the things she believed in. She didn't apologize, but instead went back to the facts and said, this is how it is. So um, she now is uh, working with a political consulting firm. They work to get conservatives elected. And on top of that, she does media appearances all the time quite frankly, not just here at Conservative Commandos. And she has her own show. It's called Angela's Soapbox. It's on the Raging Elephants radio network. And she has, uh, you can go to her website. It's called angelassoapbox.com. And there you can see the things that she's thinking about writing about when she's not here. And, uh, you know, if I had my way, we'd have her all the time. But she's so busy, we can't do that. But I get her whenever we can. And it's great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, George. Yes, I was canceled before canceling was cool. Yes, That's thank right. you very much. Yeah, you're a trendsetter. <laughs> a little Barbara Mandrell for you there. I like it. Well, um, this week, you know, it's just another slow news week. Nothing's happening. Nothing's so going on. So I don't know on. what we'll talk about. No, actually, there's lots to talk about. What's on your mind? Well, um, I definitely want to talk about the Biden bombshell um, and... Amy Coney Barrett. So your Those are boss, two good topics. What should we start with? Either one's fine. We'll, we'll make sure we get to both since we've got two segments. We probably need like 10 segments to, to do the whole smear on both those topics. But we can do the overview in two segments. So let's just do it. Well, I was very fortunate that when I started watching the YouTube of the hearings, I was able to get it where I didn't have to listen to the Democrats. But for my job, I do have to kind of listen to them. You have a special filter? Because I want to know, if you have that filter, can you please tell our listeners how they... The, the trick is to get it about 30 minutes behind, and then you can fast forward oh. through all their stupidity and their you know, their yeah. charts. I do, um, I, for example, just on that tone, um, if you, I mean, I also listen to the whole thing, because like, I, I listen so that our to. listeners don't have to, I have to, it's my job, but I have to be honest, it worries me that by listening, my IQ will drop. For sure. I mean, what's weird is that none of them seem to be able to lay a glove on her about her educational brilliance or her knowledge of the most obscure case. They're like throwing out obscure cases. She's like, oh, that case? Let me give you a dissertation for five minutes about that case. And they can't they can't lay a glove on her. They, they've insulted her, her family, her faith, her beliefs. And it's just amazing to me when they talk about dark money or that she's a member of the Federalist Society. It's like, thank God she's... Thank God she was a member of the Federalist Society because, you know, our dark, our dark money, quote unquote, isn't wicked and horrible. The left's dark money comes from places like George Soros and Planned Parenthood and Black Lives Matter and all the other filthy leftist organizations that are polluting everything uh, in our culture now. And I think she's the, 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 the parading of the, the poor people of no Obamacare. It's like the reason Obamacare is such a wedge issue for Democrats is because they think that we're all as stupid as their constituents are. Most people who had to get Obamacare, and I honestly they are. could not afford it. The IRS tried to fine me. I never paid the fine. And then Trump got rid of the individual mandate, so they didn't come after me again. But the lie that Obamacare is this great thing, we all know that the Democrats, what they wanted to do was just jump into single payer. And this was just going to be the bridge to get everybody there. And now they're acting like it's great when it's a total disaster. What President Trump wants to do, his health care plan, is to uh, give competition free reign again. And it would help companies, it would help doctors, and it certainly would help patients. 
which the left cannot right. do because it's not a command and control. No, you're exactly right. I mean, it's very frustrating. They also listen to them, for example, equate the idea that if you get rid of Obamacare, everyone loses their coverage. Yes. And the reality is, is that's not the case. Uh, you know, it's just, it would just change the ground rules so they'd have more say over what their coverage was. There'd be more competition for the packages they're offered. Chances mm -hmm. are that would drive prices down and quality up because that's how it works on everything else. You know, whether it's a, a smartphone or a, a, tele, a large screen TV, guess what? Prices drop, quality goes up. That's how the market the free works. market when it's not being, uh, when the government isn't picking winners and losers. And remember, our uh, Senate Democrats and their House uh, counterparts and their staff were exempt from Obamacare. Yeah, if it's All such a great thing, why would they exempt themselves? Yeah. I wonder why if it's so yeah. great. Right, right. Yeah, because I, I know that at our house, I exempt um, myself from things like root beer floats and, and apple pie and no homemade ice cream. I don't want any of that stuff. You know, <laughs> I, I force that on the children and stuff because they don't know what's good for them. But for me, I'm not having it. Yeah, I don't well, think it actually works that way. My house with broccoli and spinach, <laughs> but I guess. Yeah. The good stuff, yeah, you never exempt yourself from the good stuff. Come right. on. Yeah, so now you make a good point. That's all, that's all they have, though. I mean, the woman is, you know, Maisie Hirono, who is about the most brain dead member of the Senate. I mean, that is that's a hard one to pick. Yeah, I'm embarrassed for I'm embarrassed for the state of Hawaii because you, you, it's enough. like really. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of embarrassments out there. I think that, quite frankly, Cory Booker is a bit of an embarrassment. He ends up looking like this, you know, kind of again, kind of a doofus. But um, you know, it's why why do you have to sound dumb? You know, I feel like I could articulate better arguments to oppose her nomination than they have. And I support her nomination. Yeah, Maisie, <laughs> someone said, can't we just get Tulsi Gabbard to go ahead and, and be the senator from Hawaii? Yeah. I mean, Maisie Hrona, oh, Amy Barrett, do you believe in that sexual preference? Instead, I mean, the, the, the weird things they pick up on that, because Amy said sexual preference as opposed to orientation, that means she's a bigot. I mean, they make... Z it's just, it's this language they've tried to corrupt. It's 1984 on a grand scale. And remember, they're the party of science, yet they're the ones who think you can choose your gender every morning. and that Obamacare is great not and that we don't once, need to know. Morning. I'm sorry? I said not just once, but every morning, meaning it's, yes. a, it's a choice you get to make every single day. It's kind of like, what color shirt will I wear? Yes. I make that choice every day and I get to make that choice every day with gender too. That's yeah, right. That, that's science-based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's there's a lot of sound science behind that one, and it's also science based because they they also believe that of course man can control the weather and climate. And I like to tell my Democrat friends, remember when you were a child, and um, there were these things called the seasons, and every year there were four of them when we used to learn about them in school. And there's wait, something. Wait, wait, wait. Can you run that by me one more time? This is all new. I've never what seasons, four yes. seasons? Yes, and it has something to do with Earth tilting towards the sun. I know it sounds crazy, but you and me did not change the weather today. I know it's nuts. But again, they're the ones that are the party of science. And it's just, yeah. they're just embarrassing. Yeah, if you believe them, then that before Trump, there were not hurricanes. No. Before Trump, there were not hot days. There were no forest fires before Trump no. either. You know, and it's just well, like, oh, come on. Fires. You guys claim you're the party of science. You're the party of demagoguery is what it is. Yes, there would be far fewer forest fires if the Democrats would uh, let stop the stranglehold from environmentalist wackos and allow them to have forest management. But right. remember, Barack Obama, we didn't have any weather any oddities during Barack Obama's eight years because remember his election was going to stop the rising of the sea levels because he was the first black president right, right. party of science exactly well also I, I remember um, you know homelessness was considered a big problem when President Reagan was the president and then magically when it became um, you know Bill Clinton it was no longer a problem it was solved immediately but then weirdly it became a problem again eight years later when George Bush was elected so it's so, kind of like you know and it's the same with the cages right that was not a problem which putting children in cages was never an issue until has until a Republican president does anything it's not an issue so just check your privilege George check your Check your white privilege and remember that Barack, if Barack did it, it's fine. And remember, the Rona is not going to get the homeless population either. Even though you would, one would think that it would be skyrocketing in homeless populations, but it's not because it's not a real pandemic. 
Yeah. It is interesting, the um, the level of kind of insanity you see. We're heading up against the break, so maybe now is a good time for us just to take care of some business. And when we come back, we'll hit the other issue. But uh, I want to remind our listeners, this is, and viewers, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth. We're coming on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, the AUN TV Network, and of course, always Al Gore's Amazing Internet with TalkStream Live, iHeartRadio, Net uh, Talk America, you name it, we're all there, and including our own website, ccrshow.com. Attention homeowners, do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled, regardless of your medical condition, as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents and they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp, call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. 
Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show. Thanks to the Conservative Commandos radio network broadcast all across this great nation and the AUN TV network, the America Uncensored News Network, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet. I'm George Landreth. I'm glad you're with us. If you want to catch a rebroadcast, check out our website, ccrshow.com. We've been talking with Angela Box, and just so you know, you can check out her stuff. She has a, a radio program called Angela's Soapbox. She also has a website in which she carries a lot of original content that is angelasoapbox.com. But uh, Angela, before the break, um, we had kind of mentioned that we might might get a little bit into this uh, more is dribbling out about um, Joe Biden. More is dribbling out about the fact that he's been lying. Now, the fact is we already knew this, but if you're the mainstream media, you like to pretend that none of this is verified, right? Oh, this is un, you know, unverified speculation. It's like, that's interesting because we now know the entire Russia hoax as it related to people like General Flynn and you know anyone in the Trump campaign was entirely manufactured by Hillary Clinton, the FBI, and other unscrupulous people who knew it was false but peddled it anyhow because it suited their political purposes. That's now a fact. That's not an opinion. That's now established fact. And um, and and of course now what it looks like is Joe Biden has is actually also in on the gig in terms of being somebody who was selling out his country for money the same way the Clintons did and he's been denying it. in the debate he flatly denied it and guess what yeah he acted like he didn't know what that isn't true that's not true let me tell you something can you imagine you're Joe Biden and you wake up today realizing your crackhead son did something else really stupid Hunter Biden Biden, if this story is true, and it looks like it is, he took his laptop to a repair shop in Delaware. He left it there for quite some time. The owner called several times to get him to come pick it up. Hunter Biden did not, because I guess when you have Biden money and you're getting $1.5 billion loan guarantees from China and $83,000 a month from uh, Ukraine, you, you don't need a little Mac, Mac, MacBook Pro. You can just let that go. So the owner got opened it up, found out what was in it, and was like, holy crap. Got in touch with Giuliani. Now we have proof that Hunter Biden absolutely 100% was introducing his father, the vice president of the United States at the time, to his business associates in Burisma in the Ukraine. We know that the prosecutor was fired because Joe Biden told him it needed to happen or they weren't getting the billion dollars of loan guarantees under the Barack Obama administration. That's our and money, by the way. So he's using our money to get money for his son. Yes. And so his crackhead son, with all kinds of interesting uh, photographs on the uh, the device as well, this MacBook Pro was cloned smartly by the by the owner, and then the original was given to the federal government, also Rudy Giuliani and I believe Steve Bannon. And you know the the reaction to this is really remarkable because if you'll the only place that is sh running right now is Talk Radio and Fox. They are censoring the hell out of it on Twitter, on Facebook. You are not able to post anything about it. They put warnings about it. I was kicked off of Twitter over two weeks ago after I had a, a speech at a the Unmuzzled rally in Houston, and they still won't tell me why I was kicked off. They're acting well, I like think, I think I know. It's because you were presenting a view of science that they don't want to hear. Right. Because I they're not pro-science. They're pro their version of whatever it is, and then they call that science. So if they you want to have a conversation about what we can do to, to be, defeat the COVID virus, and it doesn't right. meet with their criteria, then they need to shut you up. Yes, yes. And I want to, before we do go, I want to touch on the, the latest Gallup survey on Americans' uh, attitudes towards the Rona and their behavioral standpoints and the way they um, act. And shock, spoiler alert, big difference between Republicans and Democrats. But, um, but Biden, this thing is, is going to, if there's a, if we can break through the monolith of Google and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and NBC and CNN and MSNBC, it's going to get out. And I, what I hope happens is that once we win and God willing, we win, because I do believe that God wins and I believe that God is on, God likes, loves the good. And I think that our president is not only a great president, but I think he's a good and decent person. And I think God wants the good to win. So once the re-election happens, I think Trump is going to open up a can of whoop ass and Bill Barr be damned. I think Barr and Durham are, are you know, trying, we want to be political, but once this election is over, I mean, there better be arrests and heads better roll. This is outrageous. Yeah. Selling our country so your crackhead son can enrich himself. And also not just him, the whole Biden family. Oh yeah, yeah. His brother-in-law. It's it's crazy. I mean, it it, it is. Yeah. All of them have become have become millionaires. Yep. Biden himself owns more than ten or twelve million dollars worth of real estate, yeah. uh, and um, 
you know, on a job that pay on a job that was paying him at one point, you know, like one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, actually less than that when he started off. He was there a long time, 40 some years. But yeah, he's a government. He's a government schlub for 50 years and he's a multimillion. He's a millionaire multi times over. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how that works exactly. I mean, it is it is what Donald Trump talked about with draining the swamp. And that's why yeah. he has these on both sides of the aisle. The Paul Ryans of the world hate him just as much as the Barack Obamas and the Hillary Clintons of the world. It's very interesting to me to see this kind of double standard because hook, line, and sinker, the whole Russiagate thing from the very beginning was a lie and the press didn't care. And there was lots of evidence early on that there was something fishy going on, like the fact that the, uh, you know, a, a Russian prepared the dossier and it was paid for by Hillary. This was known a long time ago. This isn't like six months ago. And yet that never deterred anyone. They just went with it because it met their, it, it supported their bias. It supported their worldview. And now we see the exact opposite, which is a story that has all the indicia of being true because there's certain facts we know for a fact actually happened at this point. And these other facts that are being added to it are all consistent with that. Yeah. Um, so it helps kind of buttress them, so to speak. And yet they act like, oh, well, we don't know. I mean, this could be false. We, we, we have to, it has to be verified first. It's like, I'd kind of like you guys to verify everything first. And if that were your standard all the time, I could live with that actually. I really could. That's fine. Whatever the standard is, have it go both ways. Right. And yet well, it never goes both ways. It only runs down. What you described down was the wrap-up smear was what Nancy Pelosi let the cat out of the bag. The Russia hoax is called the wrap-up smear. So you 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 make up the dossier. You find these fake these stories that are outrageous. You put them in this official document, and then the document gets somehow given to an FBI agent who then somehow gives it to a member of the press and then, oh, it's been reported now, so we have to look into this. Right. All circular reporting and all all lies. Mm -hmm. And if, if this country is to survive, we need a total clean out of the swamp, 100%. Oh, yeah. People, There are people at the FBI and people at the Justice Department who have to go to jail for this because they didn't, they didn't just, you know, get sloppy. They broke the law and they used government power, the power that we gave to them, and we gave it to them so they could pursue dangerous people who were violating our national security and violating our law. They then took that power we entrusted to them, turned it on us, and tried to basically tell us, you don't get a vote for you think you get to vote for, we're gonna undo all that. That is an act, quite frankly, of treason. It's an act of sedition, and those people are gonna have to go to prison for it because it violates the law, it violates everything that it tears the fabric of our constitutional republic. And we better get it stitched back together because if we don't, the game is over. The game is over. If we if we win this election, the left is gonna go insane. It I think it will we'll be looking at a civil war type of scenario. Yeah, if they've kind of lose, promised that, haven't they? They've talked yeah. about violence and all this. I mean it's yeah. it's kind of an interesting tact. You better it, vote for who we want you to because if you don't, we're gonna yeah. burn your towns down. Yeah, okay, it's that sounds like a really tactics, good argument. But if, if we if if they win, I also think there's going to be riots, and and it's going to get really bad really quick. People thinking that you know certain people are being shadow banned on Twitter or me suspended for no reason. I mean, they're going to start just wholesale deleting all the information they don't like, memory holing all these people, and it is really remarkable. If people go reread 1984, go reread Brave New World. Cultural, the book, the cultural war is Brave New World. The government is 1984, but they're all morphed together, and we are living it. If we don't get a handle on these, this Google, this uh, Facebook, Twitter, even some Amazon with you know their media holdings, and break these monopolies up, we are living in Orwellian times. Scary. Absolutely, it is scary. Well, um, in the next uh, you know four weeks, I, we're going to find out. It'll be less than that, I guess, out. but who knows if we'll know on election night because the whole point of what the Democrats are doing is to make sure election night isn't actually election night. But right. at some point in the near future, we're going to know what America's future may look like. And it's going to take a very sharp turn for the worst if the Biden-Harris ticket were to win. I don't think they will, but if that were to happen, if they can steal the election, then America's in deep, deep, deep trouble. And deep it worries trouble. me. Well, Make sure uh, to go to yesterday in Texas. And the line was very long. I waited about 30 minutes. So, I mean, they look like Trump voters, but who the hell knows? So yeah. I just, uh, you know, everyone needs to vote in person. No, whatever you can do, vote in person. So I they agree. can't steal your they can't, they can't throw your ballot if you vote in person. Right. Yeah, uh, we keep hearing stories about that. Well, Angela, our time's about up, but before we go, I want to make sure our listeners know they can follow your work. And I've clued them in a little bit, but I want them to hear it from you. 
Well, I was on Twitter, <laughs> but not anymore. But my main website is AngelaSoapbox.com. All my all my content is on there: shows, uh, articles, media appearances. Um, I'm on um, Angela Box Public on Facebook. I hopefully will be back on Twitter soon. It's at the box that rocks with two X's. That's also my Instagram and Parlor, which I don't get on very much, but. I'm really bummed out that I'm not on Twitter right now because I want to fight where the enemy's at. But I want to tell you the funny story about the Gallup survey. So this was done mid-August through end of September, and it asked people their attitudes towards coronavirus. And you would not be surprised to know that Democrats are more afraid of getting coronavirus. They love wearing masks, of staying out of social, social areas, and they're scared to death of getting the Rona. Republicans, on the other hand, realize that a piece of paper or bandana isn't going to stop a virus particle that is 0.1 micrograms. And they realize that probably developing herd immunity is the way to go. Even even if the president can't say it, we all know it's true. We all know it's true. Yeah. We'll be okay. Yeah, no, you're right. And and that's not, um, you know, they say he's trying to soft sell things. It's, no, he's being positive. We are going to get through this. America is not going to cease science. to exist tomorrow because of the coronavirus. We might cease right. to exist because of statists and leftist right. wackos, but it won't be the coronavirus that defeats America. No, it'll it'll be from within. And and the thing, one more thing about the party of science. So remember, the party of science that says you can choose your gender, man controls the climate, also believes a piece of paper can stop a virus particle that is 0.1 micrograms in size. The party of science, the Democrats. They're idiots. <laughs> They are indeed. Well, we are up against the break, Angela. It's been great to have this time with you. I appreciate you making time in your busy schedule to join us. Um, you know, it's just, it's always fun. And uh, I think you bring us good information. And quite frankly, you present it with energy and vigor in a way that's, I think, just makes it fun. So thanks so much. Well, thank you. I will talk to you soon then. Absolutely. We're coming on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, the AUN TV Network, and Al Gore's amazing inter internet, including our own website, ccrshow.com. Don't go away. The Conservative Commandos will be right back. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these dental visits vision coverage hearing coverage home delivery of drugs even gym memberships some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve call us right now the call is free the information is free and there's no obligation make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a medicare advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want call us right now Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. 
Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and the television show. AUN TV Network, Conservative Commandos Radio Network, and Al Gore's Amazing Internet. We're, we are truly everywhere. But... Uh, you know, we're, we're about out of time, Melissa, so I just want to thank you for joining me. It's always fun to do the show with you. It's great to be with someone who is articulate, well-informed, and understands how liberty works. And so, uh, but how about if you tell folks how they can follow you? Because I know that you're on all the time here, but the reality is there's seven days a week, and they need to have more Melissa in their life. So how do they do that without you having to take out a restraining order so they're not stalking you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm easy to find on social media. I'm just Melissa Isaac on Facebook. Um, I'm Isaac Law Firm is my business page and follow us there. And I'm just Melissa.Isaac on Instagram. So Isaac with a K, it's simple. There's very few of us, so I'm easy to find. That's great. And you can follow me as well, George Landreth, my uh, organization, ff.org, Frontiers of Freedom, ff.org. And then you can follow me on Twitter at G Landreth, L-A-N-D-R-I-T-H. So that spells Glandreth. I should have thought that through when I signed up, but, you know, oh well. <laughs> at any rate, but uh, we uh, we're really lucky. We had some great guests, and I really appreciate the fact that we had both uh, – Tom Del Beccaro and Angela Box both were interesting and as they always are. But we are out of time. We've got to run. We've got to go. But I do want to say on behalf of both Melissa and I, God bless and we will see you on television and we'll hear you on the radio.